church awakened. We are the church awakened. And we're singing in victory. Singing in victory. Come on, right now. Because in the name of Jesus, the giants, giants are defeated. And every single mountain, every single mountain has to move. Oh God, you're faithful to your promise. You're finished, God. You're finished what you started. Oh, yeah.
you, mighty God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Your word says, oh God, that we need to enter into your gates with thanksgiving. Yes, God. We need to enter into your courts with praise. And Lord, truly that is our intention tonight as we come before you. To come before you in thanksgiving. To come before you, oh God, in praise. Yes, my God. Father, because we cannot thank you enough. Yes. And we cannot Father, praise you right. enough, yes, oh God. Yes, irrespective of what, how our situations are. Yes. And what we find ourselves in, oh God. But we still come with a word of thanksgiving. Yes, Lord. With a praise in our hearts, oh God. Oh God, we thank you today, Father. We worship you, oh God, with everything that we have within us. We worship you and we give you our praise. For truly, oh God, you are worthy tonight as we come before you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your protection. Thank you for having your hands upon us, oh God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for safe traveling. Yes. Thank you, oh God, for keeping us safe from all harm and danger. Yes. Thank you for your provisions, yes, oh God. God. Yes. Thank you for healing tonight, mighty God. Thank you, oh God, for food that is on our table. Thank you for the jobs that we have, mighty God. Thank you for good health and strength, oh God. We bless you tonight. We give you praise and we honor you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. My reading is taken from the book of Isaiah chapter 38. And it reads, In those days, Hezekiah became sick and was at the point of death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, Amos came to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Set your house in order, for you shall die and you shall not recover. Imagine if a prophet comes and tells you those words. He says, Set your house in order. Because you will die and you will not recover. It's hard words, isn't it? And Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and he prayed to the Lord. I want you to hear his prayer. It says, please, O Lord, remember how I walked before you in faithfulness and with a whole heart and have done what is good in your sight. And he wept bitterly. See what's Hezekiah's response to what the prophet said to him. He's, he turns his face towards the wall and he prays. He doesn't give up. He doesn't say, now I'm going to die. I'm not going to recover this word that has come to me because Hezekiah had a disease that he was not going to recover. And even the, 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 the prophet Isaiah had to go and mix, some, uh, mix up an ointment with fig leaves and figs and all of that to come and to rub over his body. But the thing is that when he prays, he said, Lord, remember how I walked before you in faithfulness. He wants God to be reminded yes. of his life. Yes. And so when he comes before God, he says, Lord, remember me. Yes. I walked before you faithfully. Hallelujah. I come before you, O oh God, with my whole heart. I have done what is good in your sight. Yes. And he doesn't come with, with an attitude to, to boast, but he weeps bitterly before God. Yes. Lord, remember me. And I believe that when we have our lives in order before God, when we have our lives set right before Him, when we live our lives the way He wants us to, according to His word, when we worship Him and we praise Him and we stay close to Him, when we are going through times of trial and testing and when we can't understand what's happening, sometimes it may say death over your life. But when you come before God, you turn away from everything else. He did not face the people. Yeah. He did not. He looked towards the wall. And he prays to God and he says, God, remember my faithfulness. Because when we, when we live a life like that, we can come before God and we can say, remember our faithfulness. Remember how I lived my life, Lord. So don't take away my life. This is God's response. He, says, he said to, to, to Isaiah, go and say to Hezekiah, thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Sometimes God needs to see our tears. Yeah. Behold, I will add 15 years to your life. I will deliver you and this city out of the hand of the king of Syria and will defend the city. He says, I will give you more life 
Not at that moment when he thought if he did not come before God and cry and weep bitterly and tell God this is who I am before you. I'm your servant. Yeah. They say that Hezekiah was one of the best kings after David. He loved God with all his heart. And so when he was going through a trying time, he could come before God and say God remember my faithfulness. Yeah. Remember, Lord, how I served you with a whole heart. Remember, oh God, what good I've done. And I pray today that every one of us that are here, we are able to come before God and say, God, remember my faithfulness. Yeah. Lord, remember how I served you with my whole heart. Lord, remember the good that I have done. And God will answer. He says, I've heard your prayer. I've seen your tears. And I've heard you and I will answer. So let's just bow our heads today in a word of prayer. Father, we come before you. Lord, we know, oh God, that many negative things will be said. Lord, sometimes, oh God, even death may be pronounced over our lives. Yes, Not maybe death in the physical sense, but God, even in the spiritual, oh God, where the enemy will try to take away our spirit. Yes, yes. But God, today we come before you. And we know, oh God, because of the way that we serve you, because of the life of faithfulness, oh God. Because of how we serve you with our whole heart. Because of the good things that we do, oh God. Because we love you. Because, oh God, we come and we can weep bitterly before you. Oh God, you hear and you answer our prayers. So I'm praying today, oh God, for your sons and daughters. For those, oh God, who are going through trying times. For those, oh God, who seems like there's no way out, oh God. But today, Father, I pray. Let them come before you and let them, oh God, remind you of their life of faithfulness. Yes, Lord. Because yes, truly, oh God, we know that you are a God who hears and you are a God who answers. Yes. And oh God, you will stand for us, oh God. You will never leave us nor forsake us. So today I pray as we worship you and as we praise you, we praise you from a point of victory. We worship you from a point of victory, oh God. And we stand in awe of you because you are an awesome God. And so we thank you and give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 I greet you this evening in the precious name of Jesus. For those of you that are here in the house, those that are watching online, thank you for joining us. For our visitors that are with us tonight, we welcome you. And I pray that you have a blessed time in God's presence. Because we are here to rejoice. We are here to make a joyful noise yes, unto Lord. him. Yes. And we want him to hear our praises. We want him to turn his face towards Potter's Hallelujah. house this evening. I'm going to hand over to Lorenzo. Father, we just worship you right now. We've come this evening, Lord, just to lay everything else aside, oh God. And just to focus on you, Father. You're a miracle working God. You're the God of the impossible. And even as we stand right now in your presence, oh God, you're working all things together for our good. Uh, Father, we just honor you. Uh, Father, we just bless you and we worship you this evening right now. Oh Lord. The stories that have proved your faithfulness. Yes, my God. And I've seen miracles my mind can comprehend. There is beauty in what I can understand. Jesus. Jesus, it's you. Jesus, it's you. Jesus, it's you. I believe. You're the wonder, you're the wonder working God. You're the wonder, you're the wonder working God. All the miracles, all the miracles I've seen. Too good to not believe. You're the wonder working God. Cause you heal God. And you heal because you love. All the miracles I've seen. Too good to not believe. Too good. Too good to not Too believe. Too good, oh Lord. Too good to not believe. Oh, we just honor you right now. Come on, we just come right now. I can resurrect a man with my own hand. Just to mention, Lord. But just to mention of your name can raise the dead. Oh Lord, all the glory to the only one who can. Jesus, and Jesus is you. Jesus, Jesus is you. Because I believe, Lord, and I believe you're the wonder work 
working God. You're the one who working God. All the miracles, all the miracles I've seen. Too good to not believe. You're the one who working God. And you heal, God. And you heal because you love. All the miracles we'll see. Too good, too good to not. Honor you right now, all the miracles, Lord Jesus. Oh, right now, right now. Oh, come on, let's declare. You see how God can do the supernatural. He can do those wonders right now. And I've seen metal plates. Come on, and don't you tell me he can do it. And don't you tell me he can do it. I see cancer. I see cancer. I've seen those metal plates. Metal plates don't you tell me, God. Don't you tell me. Don't you tell do me. Don't you tell me. I've seen cancer, God. I've seen cancer. All the sickness, oh God. I believe that right now as we make this declaration as we declare that cancer disappears we declare every sickness that has a name right now disappears every heart disease uh, diabetes right now or uh, AIDS right now Father God uh, every symptom of sickness right now you can remove it oh God nothing is impossible with you Lord oh hallelujah we serve a God you see uh, I've seen cancer and I see metal plates dissolve. And don't you tell me, don't you tell me, Lord, don't you tell me. I see cancer, God, I see cancer disappear. And I see metal plates. You can do it, Lord, don't you tell me. God, the ones and is. I see troubled souls, oh God. I see troubled Right now, heal, oh God. Don't you tell 
Trusting him all right now, and you heal because you love. Oh, the miracles we'll see. Too good, too good to not believe. Too good to not believe. Too good, too good to not believe. After everything I've seen, too good to not believe. Oh, we just worship you right now, Father. Shake it. Shake it. 
Miracles happen right now when we open up our mouth, when we lift up our voices, oh God. Miracles are rushing out right now. Oh, shaking all over this place. You're connecting with us right now. Your miracle is on its way right now. Just believe. Oh, Lord. 
conquered it all. Oh, he conquered it all for us. She ended. Oh, he is mighty. Oh, the great I am. We honor you, Father. honor and all the praise for you alone are worthy this day we bless your holy name come in your strength and in your power this day lord jesus we honor and we praise you. E rebe bebe si hende rabaka shatala ma hende rebe. We bless your name. We bless your name. You alone are worthy this day, Father. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, the name that's above every other name. We just thank you, Father, that we could come into your presence. We pray this day, Father God, that you would be blessed, Lord. You'd be blessed with our worship. And even as we would sit around your word this day, Lord, yes. Father, that you'd minister to and through us this day. I pray even for myself and Lorenzo, Lord. Father God, that you would use us as oracles this evening, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, that even I does be on the old rugged cross, Lord, that you be seen through us this day, Lord. Every word that would come from our mouth, Lord, let it come from your very throne room of grace this day, Lord. Speak through us, Lord. And those that would sit, Lord, Father God, give them receptive hearts. Allow them to hear that which you are saying in this season and in this time, Lord Jesus. We pray, Father God, for strength. Even, Father, Holy Spirit, I pray that you give me the strength, give me the ability to do all that you have purpose this evening. I just pray that you would move in your power, in your strength this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks to the worship team. Amen. You may be seated. I greet you all in Jesus' name. Firstly, I would like to thank Pastor Gerald, Pastor Margie, the eldership and the leadership for affording me this opportunity to share God's word this evening. You know, as a ministry, we have been blessed with word and divine favor of God. In the past few months, we've been receiving powerful word, and I'm reminded the word of God says, don't be hearers of the word only but be doers of it. Recently, the word has been coming forth from different ministers, and uh, God spoke through them, I believe. And God, uh, God's been saying he wants to do something new, something great through this house. And he said this house would change nations. You know, it's, it's a powerful time to be alive. I think for Potter's house, it's a powerful time to be alive. I believe we've been through seasons where God has been ministering and speaking through us. And sometimes we take that word and after a while it fades. It fades. And I'm reminded that, you know, every time God uh, says something, there's an excitement. And then after a while, we lose that excitement. It seems that there has to be a churning all over again. And... Uh, the one thing that has been seen in the last few months is that in order for God to do what he wants to do in the season, it's going to take every one of us, every joint supplies. You know, the, the, the one thing I'm reminded of, and, 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 I, and I think people sometimes say, they make this statement so uh, frivolously. They don't really understand what it says. They say God places you in a place for a season, for a reason and a season. And when, when they say a reason and a season, God doesn't make mistakes. If God places you in a place, he will place you till the fulfillment of his word happens. And I believe the only time you leave that place, either if he comes or you leave this place, you go up to him. 
Because if God places you in a place, he knows everything in the beginning. Before we were formed, he knew you, he set you apart to do his work. He knew where he was going to place you, he knew the location, he knew the house, he knew what he had placed in you to do his work. So, you know, when we say this, sometimes it's because of our own understanding. If we, if God places, if someone comes in and they say, you know, God put me in this house uh, to be part of Potter's house, but it's only just for now, and then I've got to move on. The only time I believe you would move on is if you're moving with the ministry. If the ministry is expanding and going to another location, and then you move, then that's being in the plan of and the will of God. I believe sometimes because we have our own agendas and suddenly we think we've outgrown the vision, you cannot outgrow the vision that God's placed over a visionary of the house. The only time if your spirits do not connect, and, 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 and sometimes we give, we give that a thought and we say, yeah, you know, definitely, yeah, the person's moved on, and, and, and I don't believe that it is. I think so, we have to get to the place where we're real and we say it as it is. Because we're not here to compromise. Because when you compromise, you give the devil a footstool. You allow the devil in. And then there'll be the devil in coming and he, and he can be rampant and he can cause changes. And you know, I say the one thing I say this is the best place to be. Because when God gives a word, it happens almost instantly. And because of the man of God, and um, when, when, I was, when I was preparing this word, I was reminded uh, of my life. I was reminded uh, of where I would have been. And, I, and today I want to share whether you are young, whether you are old, this, if God says he's going to do something through you, he will do it. And this is the right place to be. And I say that because I know, I know that I know that I know. There's a grace over this house, and there's a grace over Pastor Gerald. He's able to do. God would not place that burden on someone if he can't trust them. And, and the reason I can stand here uh, confidently and say that, because 24 years ago, my ministry started because of Pastor Gerald. And uh, if people knew me, if people knew who I was, how I lived my life previously, they would not place me over the youth ministry because they wouldn't see what God deposited inside of me to, to, to do that youth ministry. Now, for me in youth ministry, for me, there was a word I received from a man when I was in Joburg from a man of God in Zambia. He came some 2,000 kilometers down from Zambia to Johannesburg to speak to me. That's how specific God is. He spoke to me, but when he gave me the word, I had to do something with the word. I had to travel another 600 kilometers, come down to Durban, hear from God, and go up. But in that time, I never realized what I heard from God. But when I got back to the place where I was trusting God at the time, and, I, and I'll tell you, if, you, if you had to see me according to the worldly standards, according to what the world expects of you, I was living the life. I, was, uh, I had my own flat. I had a vehicle, I had money, I could travel every week to Durban. So there was nothing, according to worldly standards, there was nothing lacking. But when I got to my flat, although I had a lot of friends around me, I was alone. And that's not a good place to be at. But sometimes it's the best place to be at. Because in those times when you're alone, you can go on your knees, you can cry out to God, and you can ask him for direction. And that's what I did. I asked him for direction. So when I came down to Durban, even when I moved down to Durban, I didn't know why I was coming. I knew I heard this word. I knew I left a job in Durban. But I came down. I didn't know I'm going to be in ministry. And when Pastor Gerald met me, okay, the first time I came down, I went, uh, I loved playing soccer, so I played soccer. I injured my back. And uh, I, could, I was out for two weeks. And then I met Pastor Gerald. And when I met Pastor Gerald, uh, two weeks after being down, uh, in Durban, he asked me to do um, uh, a camp with the young people. And that's where the youth ministry started off. Now, I have a burden for youth. I still have a burden for youth. But my season changed. I'm no longer a youth leader, but I'm still in the same place. So your season can change. So when I say that, your season in God will change. In the 24 years, I still, still this very day, I have a burden for young people. 
I pray for them. I speak into their lives, but I won't lead them. I won't be a youth leader. But I had the opportunity to deposit in other people's lives that are able to lead them. They're able to deposit. So there's a one thing that we need to understand, and, and maybe the scripture might seem uh, very different to speak about this scripture and talk about uh, uh, your testimony. And, uh, and the reason I want to share the testimony, and my testimony, and, and why it is so relevant for this season and this time is, is when every time I heard it, people were speaking about your testimony, uh, the, you, people are saved by the blood of the Lamb, the word of your testimony. And that's what we are here to share. Share our testimony, people know, but I believe it's with this season because some people do not realize the grace that's in this house. And I believe if you're planted here, you're at the right place because this man of God knows how to release that which is in you. And uh, my, my scripture reading, maybe I didn't go to the scripture, so you're a bit worried. My scripture reading is Psalms 23. Uh, David is, is, a, is one of, for me, is one of the most, the best example you can have to look at your life. Because he's, he's got everything in him, from king to learn now to worship. But the one thing is, and uh, Psalms 23 starts off, it says, The Lord is my shepherd to feed, to guide, and to shield me. I shall not want. Now, David knew as a shepherd what he had to do. But Lord Jesus is the good shepherd. So he knows when he was saying what the shepherd does, he, he gives you food, so there's a providence. He guides you and he shields you. So, so we, we, we speak so often about the word of God being a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So it's a, it guides us and it, and it directs us. Uh, so he knows, you know, uh, being that easy. The, the second verse says, he lets me lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside still and quiet waters. So there's a peace, there's a serenity, there's a uh, green is uh, where green pastures for the sheep. That's the best place to be at. Still waters, they can go and drink freely. So it's not gushing, it's not rushing. He refreshes and he restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me, your rod to protect me, your staff to guide me. They comfort and console me. I want to stick to this word. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anointed. You have anointed and refreshed my head with oil. My cup overflows. You prepare your, uh, your table before in the presence of your enemies. Sometimes our greatest enemy is ourselves. He gives you everything. And sometimes we're the ones we're not grateful we're not thankful, but also we know our past. We know what we've been through. You know, uh, and, and I, I'd, like, I'd like you to just, just, just uh, uh, think about this for a while. Every time we know that God has called us to do something, we always reflect on the past and you say, Lord, no, you know, you know who I am. You know what I've done. I can tell you that when peop people knew me before I got into ministry, and some of them were saying, not him. He, can, he cannot, God can't be using him that way because they knew my past. But the word of God says there, there is therefore no condemnation for them that die in Christ Jesus who walk by the spirit and not the flesh. It also says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away and all things have become new. All things. So everything about your past if you're allowing your past to restrict you from doing what God has purposed for you, the only person you are deceiving is yourself. Because God wants to use you. And whatever you, you have, whatever you've been through, whatever, it should be something that helps grow you, helps develop you for what God wants to do to your life. Because if you can use whatever you've been through to be a testimony, it'll change and shape lives. I've seen young people, or I see young people nowadays, and I feel that we're losing a generation. But we're not only losing a generation of young people, we're losing a generation in the 30s, in the mid-30s. People are, people are getting to the place where they are not, uh, they say, I'll leave this for later, when, when I get older. And you know, uh, I'm grateful God gave me a second chance. But not everyone will have a second chance. Not everyone might not have that. 
that uh, the uh, a second chance. Not everyone might have the same opportunities I had, and and I believe that, and not because of uh, I'm uh, God's favorite or something, but but people pray, people pray for you, and you can change. So I stand here not because of my accolades. I don't stand here because of anything I've done. I stand here because I understand the prayers that went before God for my life. I understand because who he is in my life. I understand that, that he's called me and he set me apart. I understand that whatever I've been through, it, it wouldn't restrict me from getting to where I want to get because I now I've placed my trust fully in him. I understand that he's created me for greatness and, and all that I do, all that I say is not because of all anything I've done. It's because of his grace, his favor, his love, his protection, because he cares for me. And you know, uh, when, I was, when I was preparing the word, I was reminded of a word that Dr. Fuller shared some six, six years ago, almost six years ago. He spoke about us being anointed, but he, he went, he, uh, I think he, he took his scripture reading from 1 Samuel chapter 15, uh, when uh, David was anointed uh, as king. But when he, when he said, when David came to anointed, he, he, when he preached or he shared that word with us, he gave us 12 points to remember what we are anointed. He says you are anointed even though you are dirty. You know, when David came into the presence uh, of Samuel, he was, he was ruddy and he was messed up because he was taking care of sheep. He says you are anointed to lead. You are anointed to kill lions and bears. You are anointed to kill giants. You are anointed to handle the haters. You know, when someone comes and they look at you and think about your past and they, and they want to tell you that this is not for you, you can say, get thee behind me, Satan, because they're restricting you from getting to the plan and the purpose that God has for your life. You have the anointing to handle the haters. You have the anointing to overcome opposition. You have the anointing to forgive. You have the anointing to rule and have authority. You have the anointing to encourage yourself. You are anointed to conquer. You are anointed. And this one, this one sticks for me. And when I, every time I pray this over me, I pray this over my business, I pray this all the time. You, you are anointed to fulfill prophecy. You are anointed to worship. So even, even in, your, in your times when you feel you cannot get a grip of yourself, you say to yourself, I'm anointed to worship. Even if the devil comes in and he wants to run right in your life, he cannot run right. You know, the one thing I want to remind you, the devil is real. Sometimes we think, we, sometimes we give Satan too much power, and sometimes we think he's not real. The devil is real. If he can get angels to fall from heaven, he has the power to get you into hell. If you can understand that, then you get to a place where you realize that, that you've got to be strong and you've got to get into the word. Because if anything you can, 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 are you able to overcome with is by declaring the word of God. And, and Jesus gave us a perfect example. Anytime Satan attacked him, he was able to speak the word. And if we have the attack that comes up against us, we speak the word against it, the devil has no authority over your life. And if we allow the devil to have authority in our life, we allow the devil to engage us, we allow the devil to take control of things in our life, we're going to give up what God has given to us. We're going to give up, we're going to end over, we're going to be like uh, just giving up our birthright. We, we should be at a place where we know who we are, we know who we are, we know what's deposited in us because God has deposited greatness in us and he's called us and He set us apart for holy works of worship and He set us apart to do his work. So if God has set you apart, there's nothing should hinder you, nothing should stop you from doing what God has called you to do. So this evening, I want to remind you, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are made in his image, in his likeness, and all that you require for this life is already deposited in you. In this season, we are gonna, we're going to conquer, we're going to do more, and every one of us are required in order for God to move us to the next level. Amen. Amen. You all are blessed this evening. Okay, after I'm done with my word, we're going to go into an overnight prayer. All night prayer. You all ready? Amen. <laughs> you all looking too serious. Nila was blessed with that brother. Um, you know, just before I uh, share my word, I just want to say thank you to Pastor Jedel and Pastor Maggie and the eldership 
for the for the opportunity to share the word for today, our exhortation. Um, you know, just to add, you know, something, and uh, you know what Neil was speaking about is that today I stand here, also a result of of a prayers um, of people standing in the gap where nobody else could or wanted to. And, and, and I salute Neil and Pastor Gerald as well for that because I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for their belief and, and their faith in me that God has so much more. I could have been dead. I could have been in prison. Uh, so many things could have happened to me, but I'm here today to share the word. Amen? Amen? Um, I just want to thank God uh, uh, once again for just allowing me to minister. And please excuse my voice. Amen? I'm not sure what's wrong. Hallelujah. I've titled my, my Wednesday word, um, You Are Gifted. Amen? You all believe that? That you are gifted, each and every one of you, whether you're seated here in the house today or you're connecting with us, you are gifted. Amen? Now, we know that a cricket team has 11 players, and each player has a unique talent. Some are great bowlers, some are good fieldsmen, some are great batsmen. Now, if you observe carefully, and I know you all watch cricket, you would notice that the opening bowlers will always be the last batsman on the list. True? Right? And the top batsman would never get a chance to bowl, as that is not his forte. It's not what he is, he's equipped for, right? Each one of the players have a talent, which is only seen when they are expected to perform in that specific ro function or role. Some of them come from different cities, provinces, and like soccer as well, from different countries. But they come together, now watch this, as a team to achieve the same goal, right? We see that in all types of sports. Each one of them are important to the team as they each hold the key to bring victory for their team. Now, remember what I'm saying? Not just one person, but each one of them, right? If one is injured, they have a replacement to fill in, which, which also assures the team that they must still persevere and push forward to ultimately winning, right? And that's sport, and that's all about teamwork, and what we see. But there's a big, big difference about being a team of the world standard and being a team in God's kingdom. Amen? Amen? You see, we all watch sport. And we all know that your talent and what you're good in only lasts for a very short while. Right? True? As long as you're young, that's one of the things. As long as you can, for example, if it's cricket, you can bowl that fast ball. Or if you're a good batsman, you can still hit the six. You know, you can still, if you're a fielder, if you can still catch the ball with, with such enthusiasm. And if, if it's soccer, you know, if you're still a good defender, you're still a good striker. Ah, man, you, you be paid those dollars, you be paid those uh, euros, and you are wanted. But you know what happens? There comes a time when all of that fizzles out. And Pastor Maggie used that word on Sunday. We fizzle out. And nobody wants you anymore. You see, this is the world standard. Uh, 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 this is what the world wants from us and how they treat us. But similarly, we as God's sons and daughters, just as how the cricket players, as I mentioned, had talents, each and every one of us have a talent. But what we say is that we have a gifting that God has bestowed upon us for kingdom purpose, amen? And to fulfill the plans that he has for each and every one of us. God gave one or more spiritual gifts to every single believer. Watch this. He gave one or more spiritual gifts to every single believer to aid in the work for his kingdom. You see, he knits that spiritual gift into our personality, our talents, to create a useful and effective servant. Now, that's, what we, uh, that's our desire as believers, as children of God, is servanthood, is to serve in the kingdom of God, is to serve wherever we can, because this is what the Lord has asked us for. Amen? And he honors those that serve. Now, we all come from different walks of life. 
facing or have faced different challenges. And just like the soccer teams or the cricket teams, they all come from different walks of life. In some, ca some, some cases, each one might not know their story or where they've come from. But all they are focused on is where are we going? What's the vision of the leader? And, 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 and we're going to get to that goal, right? Same in the kingdom of God. We have one visionary. We have a leader. And we, as the children of God, the sons and daughters in the house, need to understand where are we going, being led by our spiritual father or mother, wherever we fellowship at. Remember once again, everyone is important in their own way, with their own gifting. Amen? Not just one person again. In the kingdom of God, everyone is important. Each one of you are required for the building of God's house. It doesn't matter. And, you know, this is amazing because what Neil spoke about, it ties so much into, into what I'm sharing as well. Each one of us have pasts. Amen? Each one of us have come through something. Have come through some hurt. Have come through some pain. Some doubt. Some consequences. But we, we have gone past that. Or we should be getting past that. To move forward into be kingdom builders. Amen. To be a part of God's team. A part of God's kingdom. Amen. Now, I know and I, I know you as well. That we are stronger in teams. Amen. Amen. In anything you do. If you're at work, you've got something, a task to complete. When you put in teams, you're able to accomplish so much more. Because each person is unique and brings about a uniqueness in completing the task. Amen? Just like that in a ministry. Each one of you are unique. Amen? You, some might have gray hair. Some might have black hair. Some might go put dye and have blonde hair. Some might be a little bit chubby like me, or some might be skinny like other people. Some might have a big nose, a big eyes, a small nose. A small... But you're unique. You're made in God's image. Amen? You're special. More than anything else, you are gifted as a believer. Amen? Now, I was reading the Word of God and trying to figure, uh, see, you know, uh, different, so different accounts where we saw people working in teams. And... So one of it was Jesus and the 12 disciples. Amen? So Jesus w w wanted a team. Amen? He selected a team. And he chose the first 12. Amen? Were they all perfect? No. Were they all the same? No. And you know, we all know about Peter. He was the one that carried the knife. You know, so we all got a Peter. You know, there's, 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 we all got traits of one of the disciples. But... They were required. They were needed. And guess what? God paired them off in smaller teams, in twos, and sent them out. Amen? So Jesus was doing something as well when he worked in teams. Then we look at Nehemiah. Amen? In rebuilding the wall in Jerusalem. I mean, man, you know, he got people from different tribes, different cities. And each one played a role in building the the wall. Amen. But you know what they did? And by working in teams, while some of them were building, what were the others doing? They were guarding. They were on the lookout. And that's what you call a team. And that's what we need in the house of God. Amen. But then I look at Paul. You know, Paul was amazing. You know, Paul spoke you know, in the, word of, uh, the book of Corinthians about we all are uh, one body but many parts. You know, and this was uh, so, so profound because, you know, he, he, and I'm just paraphrasing, he says, the ear can't tell the feet what to do, and, and, and the hand can't tell the eyes what to do, and what if there was only eyes, how would you hear, you know? So that is why they said, the, uh, the word of God says, there should have been no division. Amen? And that's in 1 Corinthians verses 12, verses 12. It talks about, but every part has an equal concern. Every part is valued. Right? Amen? Now, this is important. We all play a vital part in the kingdom of God. Now, you know, as I said earlier, at a certain age, and when you feel that you're not needed, the world system tends to say that you know more. You know? We don't want you. But I'm here to tell you five points. You can write this down. You are not too young for God to use you. Amen? 
And I hear this all the time. I'm too young to get involved in, in youth. I'm too young to get involved in, in Sunday school. Or I'm too young to be involved in young adults or, or to be a part of the worship team. Or just to be a part of God's, you know, God being able to use you. And an example I used was David. David was, a do- uh, uh, David was a do- ordained a king at a very young age. Amen. He defeated the lion and the bear at a very young age. He defeated Goliath. When he was young, amen? So what is stopping us, amen, as young people in taking control, in in being proactive, in in being active in the things of God? I mean, I thank God right now because I see in Potter's house how the young people are just getting activated. uh, uh, There's an excitement. There's a zeal to do the things for God. And this is what has been our prayer. And this should be a prayer for for every ministry. If you're joining with us online, you know, that young people would rise up. Would, would get excited for the things of God and that COVID is over now. Amen? Uh, you know, we're moving forward. We passed that. Number two, you are not too old for God to use you. Amen? Amen? An example that I used was Abraham. Abraham was a father to many nations. Hallelujah. Abraham had his first child, that was Isaac, at the age of 100. Amen? And remember, he still lived a longer life. While at his old age, he was even tested to see that if he was still faithful to the Almighty God, so that God could promise him, and tested by he had to sacrifice his son, and he did it. Amen. So to all the older people, you're not too old for God to use you. Amen. Don't let the world tell you anyhow. Don't let anything else tell you anyhow. Know that in God's kingdom, you can be used, and you are needed. Amen. Number three. You are not too sinful for God to use you. Amen? Whatever you've done, whatever you have have been through, it doesn't stop God from using you. And I I selected Saul, you know, who we know became Paul. Amen? The persecutor of the Christians who hated them, who killed them, who made them suffer. But guess what? God did a 360 on him. Amen. He opened up his eyes. He revealed to him what his purpose was. And he became one that preached the gospel. That saved the thousands. Amen. And yet he was once a sinner. But was saved. Amen. Number four. You are not too sick for God to use you. Stop letting your sickness get you down. Stop letting your sickness allow you. Not to lift up your hands and praise God. Amen. To worship God, to read the word of God, or to be involved. Because far too many times do we give that sickness life. Amen. We give the sickness life. And this is the problem that we need to move past that. Because we must say like how Dr. Mbadi says, body, and he says it lovely. You know, body, you know, this is it. We are healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Number five, you are not too poor for God to use you. And the example I used was, sorry, you're not too sick for God to use you. The example that I used was the lady with the issue of blood. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. She suffered with the sickness for many, for many years. And she waited for that very moment. And remember something that when she touched Jesus, hallelujah, he just didn't leave her. He stopped He took notice, he acknowledged her, and he said, you are now healed. And this was a testimony to others that there's power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number five, you are not too poor for God to use you. The uh, the example I used was the widow with the flower and the olive oil. Amen. Amen. All she had left when Elijah had come to her was just enough for their last meal. And what did she say in the word of God? That this was going to be our last meal and we were going to go and die. But what did Elijah come and say? You go and you make. And what, did, and what happened? God provided. God provided exceedingly, abundantly, more than she could ever ask or think. And that is where we are not too poor for God to use you. Amen. So when the world is telling us, hallelujah, that, that it's over. Amen. That you've got an expiry date. That when you come to a certain point that that's it for you. I'm here to tell you in the kingdom of God, there's no expiry date. Hallelujah. God loves you. God needs you. 
You are gifted. You are anointed. Irrespective of where you've been. Irrespective of where you are right now. What you are facing. No matter how bad the situation can be. You're part of a bigger team. Amen. You're part of the kingdom team. Hallelujah. This team is victorious. This team never loses. Because the enemy might sow doubt. And, uh, and, and people might, um, um, might speak negativity to your young people, whether it's in school, whether it's in your, in your university, where seeds of, of, of doubt are being sown into your life that you'll never amount to anything. I'm here to tell you that you're not too young for God to use you. You're not too young to have a testimony of how good and faithful God is in your life. Amen. To your old people, I'm here to tell you, to the seniors, it's because of you. You're the workhorse. Amen. You're the fire that's burning your prayers your 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 intercession that is what is power. That is what is needed in the house of God. And I pray that in every ministry right now, that, that, that intercession is being risen up. That, that the older people are given more to do. That, that, that wisdom is being imparted and taken from the older people. Because this is it. We've got it. What are we doing with it? Amen. Amen. So, so in closing, we, we all have giftings. But we have a choice. What do we do with our giftings? Amen. We can continue to, to pursue the things of God and to pursue all that God has deposited and trusted us for, or we can choose to squander it. And we've seen examples of that. We've seen actors, we've seen singers that come from the house of God, believers that, 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 that were anointed, that were gifted, that were talented. But when it got too much for them, and when they chose to do their own thing, and when, you know, they say, I'm self-made, that when they thought that they can do it on their own strength, and they need nobody else, then was the time when they, fall, uh, they fell. Amen? That's the time when, when, uh, uh, when, when God is no more in their life. And this is why we don't hear about them anymore. But when you're rooted on, 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 on holy ground, on solid ground, and when your foundation is strong, know that the future ahead is going to be greater. It's going to be better. Amen. Some of us might not see it right now, but know that God's got you. Hallelujah. So I give God all the glory and the praise and the honor. I pray that you are blessed. Okay, can we just bow our heads in a word of prayer? Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus this evening. I thank you, Lord, because you're a God that gives good gifts. You're a God that's never failing. You're a God that sees beyond the, the outside, Lord, but you search deep within, O oh God. I thank you, O oh God, because you said you'd never leave us nor forsake us. You said, O oh God, that you, you, that you are with us in the good times and the bad times, O oh God. So today, Lord, even as, as we have come, Lord, this Wednesday service, O oh God, as we have come, Lord, to listen to your word, I pray, Father God, that even as Neil and myself have shared, O oh God, that we have brought the word, Father, to your people, O oh God, and those connecting with us. I pray, Lord, that seed has been dropped, O oh God. That, Father God, that this will birth great and wonderful things to come, O oh God. I pray, Father God, that, that even your people would rise up, O oh God. The young, O oh God. The old, O oh God. The sick, O oh God. The weak, O oh God. Father God, that they will rise up and know that they are destined for great things, O oh God. That they are part of God's kingdom. And today, Father, I thank you. I thank you for what you're doing in the atmosphere. Thank you for what you're doing in the season oh God in our house and Father God I thank you Lord even for other ministries right now I pray Father God breakthrough for them oh God I pray Father God for, for the rising of the, of, of the children of God Lord sons and daughters to rise up and take their roles in the house of God that Father God that, that we're building strong churches oh God we're building strong men and women oh God for the future generations to come so Father we thank you we give you glory we give you praise and honor and even as we further tell you, Lord. Bless each and every person, Lord, and we pray for safe traveling mercies, and may they have a blessed week, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.